Hey everyone, welcome back. If you didn't see, we just forecasted out PayPal's revenue in another video, um, part two of the series. And, you know, we get them going from about, what is this, 21 billion up to 55 billion over the next decade. So kind of, you know, growing at the same rate they have historically, right? Like in five years, they doubled revenue here. You know, we have them doubling in five years and then um, kind of slows down a little bit in the, the last five, but very similar growth profile to what they've seen historically. So we link up the DCF and you'll see, right, we go from 21 and a half to 55 and a half, an unlevered free cash flow of 3.8 to 12.2. And you should see this should actually be getting, uh, the margin should be getting better is what we have into consideration here. So maybe that's something to look at, just to kind of baseline, you can understand. Um, my model is assuming pretty significant improvements in operation. And so what we've done here is you can see I've aggregated the sales growth, right? So historically they've grown pretty strong um, and then kind of having them kind of keep strong growth for the next five years or so and then kind of taper off to at a certain point you just get so large it's kind of hard to continue um, the growth. But, you know, maybe they'd be able to keep it up. Um, but you could go watch the last video to see how we get the revenue. And then transaction expenses. So historically it was at 34 and it's actually been creeping up. Um, I've modeled this into actually go back down over time to go back towards that 2017 level. Transaction and credit losses, this has just been 8% historically, so we just held it flat at 8%. So you can see total COGS profile, right? We're going from 45% down to 43%, and that's going to be driven by this transaction expense improvement. Now, if we look at the operating expenses, you have customer support and operations. This has been decreasing um, year over year, so kind of keeping the same trend. I have a decrease in quarter percent a year until it becomes about 5%. Sales and marketing, right? It's been decreasing as well. So I have a similar thing here. Um, so we have a decrease back down to 6%. Technology and development, um, this is the one that's kind of been all over. Um, so I've actually just held this flat at 11%. And then general and admin um, started to go down a little bit. So we've kind of had this taper off as well because these functions don't necessarily scale um, at the same rate the business does. So we would expect these costs to go down. Tax rate to sell to the federal, 21%. And then you can see stock based comp, capex, and depreciation. These are just, you know, kind of not, well, this is a non cash, um, but just kind of hold it flat at 6%. Capex um, looks like they've historically averaged 5 to four, five and 4%, so just hold it at 4 Depreciation, 80%, um, just what I do to kind of wash out the noise there. Um, if you continue to depreciate more than 100% a year, eventually, right, you don't have any investments in the business. Um, so I actually think it's kind of alarming when you see over 100%, but you see that sometimes in not highly capital intensive businesses um, where they don't have to necessarily invest back. And then working capital, uh, just hold that flat to kind of really neutralize the, the impact of it here. But anyways, with all that said, I plugged in our, I think we calculated 8.6% whack. So if we plug that in based off this 10 years with a 3% terminal growth, we get about $155 billion dollar market cap. Now, if we compare that to where they are today, right, today they're currently trading at a $309 billion market cap. So we're saying about a 50% discount, they'd probably be um, fairly valued. And, you know, I don't think that's too far off, to be honest, right? If we look at pre-pandemic levels, right, 100 bucks a share, they were trading at more than 50% discount um, pre-pandemic. And, you know, they had just a strong of growth really, right? Top line growth in 2019 and a little uptick in 2020, but 18 and 19 both still strong. It's not like 2020 was this massive catalyst for their business. Um, and they did benefit from the pandemic, right? I mean, a lot of people shopped online, didn't go out, transferred money, family and friends without going to a bank. So they used PayPal, things like that um, to help friends and family out. So I think PayPal definitely benefited from the pandemic, um, but we didn't see like this crazy, crazy, crazy increase there. Um, so I think they've seen a pretty big run in the last, I mean, even the last six months, right? They're up 25% there um, year to date, right? I mean, they've been as low as 226, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, a year ago, right? After the pandemic, 150, that's probably a little bit closer to a fair value. Um, so I'd say pre-pandemic is probably, you know, they're probably actually pretty well valued at that time. Um, if you believe they can kind of continue the growth they've seen historically, 
but during the pandemic, this has really shot up. So I guess maybe there's just a larger pivot, people believing that no one is ever going to return to shopping in the store um, or anything like that. And they're going to continue to e-commerce. And, you know, maybe that's the case and maybe it really is a $300 billion company. But, um, you know, I think with reasonable, you know, still aggressive, but reasonable revenue growth, you know, you get a $156 billion company, which is still massive by all means. Um, but yeah, so hope you found it interesting, um, questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'm sure some folks won't like it. I think I had a similar conclusion to square of like, it's a great company. It's growing well, but, um, current market levels don't really justify it. And I think square, right. Was, I don't know. I could pull up the, uh, let me see. What do we have for square? We can compare them real quick. I think square we had going to about. Yeah, 15 billion. Um, but right, they doubled in the last five years. The same thing PayPal's done in the last five years, um, right? If you exclude the Bitcoin crap, um, right? We have them going from 1.6 to five. And I guess the other one's 2017. So two, two to five. So about doubled. So I mean, Square's growing at the same pace as PayPal, um, but uh, it's nowhere near. Um, an appropriate valuation either, I don't think. So, um, yeah, I mean, my thought is, you know, PayPal is probably a good company if you can get in closer to pre-pandemic levels. And I think, you know, that's the interesting thing we'll see is, is there going to be a really big pullback on these tech stocks that have had massive rallies over the last year? Um, time will tell. And, you know, maybe they keep the high multiple for a long time and they slowly grow into it. Um, but, you know, they can't keep this level of growth forever. So, uh, be interesting to see, but they do play in China, which is a, a big factor, I think. So I think that's, I think they're the first outside fi FinTech to be allowed in China is what I read. So I think if anyone is going to really dominate the market, it, it could be a PayPal, um, but we'll see. So thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.